Right, in Cape Town, uh, there they almost hit day zero in 2018, if you remember, after the worst drought in decades. Residents were forced to use water sparingly to avoid catastrophe, but it's taught them and the city some valuable lessons. ENCA's Monique Mortlock is on the story, and she joins us now live to give us more details. Monique, uh, as we're hearing uh, people from Durban, for instance, complaining about no water and water rationing, and we know the Eastern Cape is facing day zero. Uh, tell me what it is that residents and businesses in Cape Town uh, learned and the lessons that they can share perhaps with those other provinces? Well, from the households and even the schools that we visited today, we've seen that that water consciousness being water savvy, it still continues today, even four years after the drought in many households, like the the first household that we visited this morning, the gentleman there, he's using um, water from the ground, from a well, as well as harvesting rainwater to, in, uh, uh, to use that water for uh, to flush the toilet and um, to water their garden. So it's these small ways that many Cape Townians are still using in their homes today to ensure that they are saving water but to tell us a bit more about some of the lessons that we learned i'm speaking to dr claudia schneider from the wwf's fresh water program um doctor just tell us um now now we heard from the city of cape town a little earlier this morning about the importance of tapping into alternate water sources that is one of the key lessons that they learned from that 2018 drought do you think that we have found that we have found enough sustainable ways to tap into alternate water sources um, in the eventuality of another disaster? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think the city of Cape Town has definitely learned its lesson to have to diversify its water sources. And I think one of the particularly important ones has been groundwater um, that was uh, definitely being used more from the city of Cape Town. And it's, I think, New Water Strategy wants to use 7% of groundwater in its overall bulk water use by 2050. And one of the recent studies that WWF was involved in also looked at residential groundwater use. And what we found is that in six different residential areas across Cape Town, about 50% of the new boreholes that were drilled were all drilled in the day zero period. So there was a huge amount of residents and businesses that um, looked for groundwater in order to diversify and also secure their water access. And if you ask if that is actually a sustainable thing, that is a really good question because just as much as you're going to be driving a car, you need a fuel gauge to understand whether you're an empty or not. And groundwater is similar. You can't see it, but you need to monitor the groundwater level to know what it's doing. And that is a really important part that the city needs to do where it will, is withdrawing its water. Um, and the residents also need to have a way to understand what their neighborhood groundwater levels are doing. And that is something that's really, really important to start start because that's something that's previously been neglected and if we are wanting to use groundwater again in future as a fallback which is what it originally was then we need to make sure it's sustainable because if it becomes just one of the new water sources then what do we fall back on afterwards and speaking of that fallback do you think that we as a city as a province um, uh, that we learned enough lessons to prepare us for uh, should we hit another drought which is likely, given the, the, the state of climate change and, and the, the different weather cycles that, that continuously repeat itself, do you think that, that we will be sufficiently prepared just in terms of our infrastructure and um, putting in the necessary measures to manage our water supply? Um, I think the city has really gone to um, revision its own water structure um, uh, strategy since day zero. So they have really tried to tackle this from all the different fronts, and they're also looking at different partnerships in order to be informed by various stakeholders throughout the city. And um, that, I think, is a really good thing, is to tackle something together and is to be cooperative and to really look for partnerships. Learning exchanges, I think, also with other municipalities would be really, really useful useful to exchange these lessons um, because Cape Town has had a lot of lessons um, for the drought but maybe we might need some flood lessons from somewhere else as well so I think that is a really important thing to do and I think a lot of 
Catonians will remember day zero and um, especially the little kids um, as a mom myself, the kids that have actually gone through that are still sticking to those practices um, the, the toilet routines and all those things that came up back at that time they're still sticking to them because that's how they grew up and yeah I think that is really positive. Thank you very much. Very positive indeed. And that's something that, um, as Dr. Shach Schneider now mentioned, children picking up on those habits and uh, still having that water consciousness. That's something that we saw at the previous school we visited in Kraikentain, that Simonsburg Primary School, where they've installed a toilet flushing system that not only saves the school lots of money, thousands of rands every month on their water bill, but also teaches children when they go to the loo um, uh, good proper hygiene, washing of their hands, but also how to save water even when they're not at school, when they are at home. All right. Thanks, Monique. Let's leave it there for now. Monique Mortlock with that report from Cape Town.